How did you spend the new year? Oh, new year, I was with widows in Bosom Train, about 250 of them, mm. uh, dancing with them, sharing mm. food, and wow. giving them a piece of cloth, and sharing wow. some gifts uh, so that they can spend a good new year. I've done that consistently the last seven years. And it's amazing. You I came choose. into politics in Ghana, I can say, eight and a half years ago. Yeah. So, are you, how, how, are you, how are you? Are you enjoying it? I'm enjoying it. <laughs> are you sure? Every minute. You see, I met this guy mm -hmm. at the airport. Yeah. He looked at me and said, Minister, God bless you. Mm -hmm. And I tried to go close to him and said, what's going to say? God bless you. Mm. And then I kind of ventured closer to him and said, God bless you for the work we are doing. <laughs> okay. And that to me, when mm. I meet people on the street and I get this yeah. encounter everywhere where people walk to me and say, well, thank you mm. for the STEM education. Thank yeah. you for the work we are doing. I never thought going to politics, somebody would thank you on the street. Yeah. So when I get that, it makes me know that it is worth it. Well, have you always sacrifices. been a politician? Because you you seem pretty good at it. And it's surprising because you... you have Okay, I've known you as a politician for only eight years, right? So you probably were... Did you do campus politics? Did you? Were you, <laughs> were you a politician in the university or something? In the university, I mean... Let me first of all say very good morning to all your listeners. Okay. Uh, so I don't forget them. <laughs> okay. But you know, I, I it starts from school. Okay. I, I was a student prefect. And uh, from there, uh, the university is uh, KNUSD, assistant secretary okay. to the SRC. Okay. 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 And the okay. secretary was uh, an architecture student who was very busy. So you were doing all the work. I ended up doing so What were you studying at Tech? Land economy. Hey, Landico, then you're yeah, yeah, I did land economy. It's a good course. And then I was an uh, assistant secretary to the SRC. What hall were you in? Republic Hall. Repo? The Republic Hall. I hear you. Wow. Yeah, so... Um, what what years were these? From here. 86 to 90. Okay. Many years ago. <laughs> 1990 is only 34 years ago. Yeah, not too long ago. 1990. But, uh, we, we had the opportunity to wow. be involved. And those were the looter days. Yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah. to hit the street and yeah. demonstrate. And yeah. So it was uh, quite an experience for those mm. of us who were there at the time. Uh, so probably I would say I cut my teeth a bit. On campus. The, because campus police campus is strong. Is yeah, because 19, this is Rollings time. Yeah. It is six. Oh, yes. So this is a difficult very times. Interesting time. Yeah. Yeah. Very yeah. interesting time. Very interesting time. When we used to be called the agent provocateurs. Yes. Yes. And, um, Tudobi Kwachi was the, I think, information minister, minister at, at the, the time. time. And he happens to be an... Uh, a tech graduate. And, oh, okay. Uh, so I, I wow. remember he came to... Uh, no, no, no. It's not him. It's not him. There was another guy who was in D.C. I've just forgotten the name. Who was um, from Republic Hall. Okay. So he used to come to us. I, okay. I remember the to name. To talk to you. He had to talk to us from Republic Hall. Mm. So very interesting. Wow. Yeah, he's from Bono. Okay. I'll get the name. You'll get the name. Yeah, but he was one NDC, PNDC guy at the time who was always frequenting mm. campus and wow. had a nice time. How has the journey of education minister been? Because I remember the video. Mm. So I think for you, when we, we watched you, the first video we saw, you, you talked about how the president at the time, candidate Kuvado, came to you in the US mm. and mm. said you should come and do politics. Yes. And then you started as a deputy education minister. Yes, please. And then in second term, he made you minister. How has that journey been for you? Very interesting to say the least, uh, because I, I see looking at where I grew up and, mm. and my background, family background, that things, um, it's an unexpected mm. position to be in when your mom didn't go to school, dad didn't go to school, you are the educa <coughs> education wow. minister. Wow. But it has been an interesting trajectory getting into politics. Mm. When I was invited by the president, little did I know that I was going to be in this position. But at first, I said to myself, I'm a CEO of a network of charter schools. These are public-private partnership schools funded by me, authorized by the Los Angeles Unified School District. Enrollment had grown three schools. Our tuition is paid for by government. And I'm running these schools with about 200 workers. What am I going to do in Ghana? That's the first thing that came to mind. I said to myself, he has invited me, but is he truly going to do this free senior high school thing? Um, so he invited you with the free SHS? Oh yes, because I asked him, what okay. is it that you are going to do that will merit my time in Ghana? And then he said, I want to implement free secondary <clears throat> education. America uh, was a country that began in the modern time this free secondary education and gave it to everyone. 
So I think you have something. You have something to offer me, mm. and I want you to come and join me. Mm. Um, and interestingly, the reason why I really even considered it, and he was very polite. He said, would you consider coming back to Ghana to help me change the education system? I asked him specifically, what is it that you're going to do? He said, I want to implement free secondary education in the country, and I think we can learn from the United States of America. Your experience here can also help me, so come. I just had this, uh, initially I said to myself, this is a politician. Is he going to go by this promise? And if I go and he doesn't uh, give me the opportunity, then what happens? Then I decided that, you know what, um, I'll meet with a mentor of mine, a former congressman. We had lunch, and then I popped up the subject going back to Ghana. And he is somebody who originally came from Trinidad and Tobago and had risen to become lieutenant governor, like mm -hmm. the deputy governor of the state of California. He went to Congress, was in Congress for 28 years. He was politician to the core. And he had come back to California, he was my mentor. So at the lunch, when I pop up the subject of going back to Ghana, he, he did not even allow me to finish the sentence. He said, yeah, I'll tell you one thing. Mm. America can do without you, but maybe mm. your country cannot do without you. So I advise you to go. I, I, he literally spoke to my heart. I began to reflect. Mm. And I reflect on the fact that I almost didn't go to high school and then look at me. Now in America, building schools for Americans. So imagine if uh, more students get the opportunity for secondary education, what will happen to their lives? So I decided that secondary education had made me who I was. And therefore, I'll be willing to come back to Ghana. And I knew what the country would have to do. So, <laughs> and was at the same time you started nurturing the Bosom Tree seat then? Because you are yeah, from actually, Bosom Tree? Yes. You see, before that, I had done a lot of work in Bosom Tree. Mm -hmm. I had built a private school. Even though you hadn't thought of coming no, no, back to do I had built politics. A, yeah, a private right. senior high school. And at that time, that was the era of the cutoff. If you got a grade 25 or more, what happened to you was that the government did not allow you to go to a public senior high school in this country. So a number of poor children were cut off from public secondary. Because of cut off point. Cut off point. Mm. And they had, their parents, if they were lucky, had to look for a loan to take them to private high schools. So there was emergence of a number of private high schools in the country. And so I was one of the people who built one. And mine was not for money. It was actually to ensure that children who could not afford to go to private schools after the cutoff will get the opportunity to go to my school. I call it Lake View. And, and when actually the free senior high school started, I decided to give the whole thing to government. So it's now a, a government school, to government. And it has been named after me. So I said the Chum Senior And it's in Bosom Tree. Bosom Tree. So you already done some work there. Yes. And then the president then says, come. Yes. So you, the nomination process was easy. Winning the, the primaries was not that tough because they already knew you, even had, though you were not... Very good. I had a formidable candidate in the person of the current Asante regime minister. Oh, Simon Asante Yeah. 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 He, he, was was the, he was the... And he was the incumbent. Yes. He was the incumbent, a formidable candidate, done three times. And wow. then here I come and people thought, you don't know Ghanaian poets. So, so generally people say he's come to test the waters. So... But I felt I was not going to test. Well, you were speaking with process and yeah, American accent. I, I was going to win. <laughs> <laughs> so, wow. So I actually hired a consultant who did research for me. So I knew I was going to win. And I wow. stepped in. But you see, I was a, a known entity. So this is 2014. 14. I was a known entity. I was not. So you were frequenting Ghana even though you lived in America? I had not frequented Ghana very much, but my presence was felt. Because of the school and the, the things school, you were doing there. And I had, had uh, purchased a, another private school that had about 80 workers. I had a microfinance of about 70 Still, Oh, workers. in the same place? Yes. I had this school with about 50 workers. So if you put it all together, I was employing not less than 200 people. Even at the time? In, at the time. So wow. based on that, I was a known entity. People knew me, but they knew me as Lakeview, because my school was Lakeview, my microfinance was Lakeview, high school was Lakeview, wow. and consequently, they knew me by that. So all that I needed to do when I started campaigning, I had my flyer under the name, I said Lakeview. Okay. okay. So they connected the dots. So you defeated Simon Osemensa in that primary? Yeah, it was a, it was a difficult one, but wow. um, since then, he's been very helpful to me. I, I won with 72% of the votes. At wow. the primary level, uh, so that is how I entered. So, so by winning, clearly the president then knew that if he won the election, 
because you had also done your part by coming to run for parliament. Yes. So his naming you as deputy minister wasn't shocking. Oh, no, no. To me, it wasn't shocking. He had promised me and I knew he would keep his promise. So for you, the deputy minister was like a test for you because you are the education guy, but you are a deputy minister. I was a deputy minister. I, and I always tell people how I was now really learning how to follow. Yeah. Because I had an organization with 200 workers. And now when I was called to the minister's office, I had to go with a pen. And Meanwhile, you are the education the guy. Yeah. Well, the minister go. is a surgeon at the time. Yes. So, so I had to go and contribute wherever yeah. I could contribute. And have it, is, it is widely reported that your relationship is not the best with your former boss, or was not the best. Uh, it was reported in the media several times. I know. How was the experience of working? You, with you see, him? I don't comment on media, <laughs> media conjectures. <laughs> no, but is so there, is there, is there truth in that? That it wasn't, a, it wasn't the best of relationships? No comment. <laughs> <laughs> but, but did you enjoy your time as deputy minister? Of course. I you really did. did. I mean, come on. You have a situation where you come to the country with a set of new ideas. Mm. Then you have a president who says, if these new ideas will help transform the fortunes of education in this country, bring it on. I mean, as a deputy minister, I had a great opportunity of some of the ideas I brought being implemented. And, and uh, I always tell people that uh, Nana Danko Kufa is a very unique leader. A leader who says, this needs to be done what ideas do you have? Bring it on. Let's get it done for the sake of Ghana. So I, I've had a wonderful opportunity. And now but, but, minister, but clearly, you are happier now as full minister for the sector that you love as against deputy because then you don't, you're not the ultimate person in charge as I mean, I mean, that is obvious. Yeah. <laughs> because now you get to rule out STEM and get STEM to catch fire in the country, right? So I was going to ask you, what, so, is, what, is, so, the, what is the Educhum flavor? that you've brought to the ministry now that you're minister. You mentioned STEM, which appears to be one. So talk a bit about the, the emphasis that you, because it's the same policy. Mm -hmm. The president has the policy, right? Mm -hmm. What emphasis or what's, what's, the, what's different about education under you? I mean, I can say to you is that I saw the agenda of the president. Yeah. Uh, and it's the same policy that mm. the president uh, access to implement so you look at the free secondary education and we implemented during my time then we began the free tvet uh okay. rolling it out making sure tvet is free but it was part of the original agenda of the president i'll say the area where we have also brought about transformation and emphasis mm -hmm. is stem mm -hmm. science technology engineering mathematics education i did it in my schools in the u.s where high schools did engineering uh, robotics and drones and all those things and now we're doing it in Ghana so you have schools uh, that were built under his first term and they've been operationalized as STEM schools across the country and there, there are new ones that we are building now uh, through the Arab Development Bank support so you can see that there has been a huge emphasis on STEM education so which means that not only have you done the free senior high school which is an access issue but we're also looking at improving the quality and you are improving the relevance of the education system. In this but why did you opt for building STEM schools as against mm -hmm. improving the STEM capacity of existing normal schools? We've done both. You see that but the emphasis has been on the STEM schools. Because I heard you last week even maybe, talking about the 12 STEM schools. In yeah, but, but you know that um, the Kufuadu philosophy for education transformation at the secondary level is this. You see, President Kufu did... Uh, uh, transform existing schools, model schools, Kumasi High School, uh, Kumasi Anglican, or Dogon. These are all schools that were transformed by President Kufo. Uh, and uh, schools that were unknown became known because he infused a lot of infrastructure intervention in, in those schools, uh, Ganata uh, High School in Accra, and a number of them. Uh, President Mahama and Mills, uh, you know, did the A blocks and they built new schools. It doesn't mean they did not do intervention in the existing schools, but the more profound intervention was seen in the new schools that they built. Now, President Kufuano decided to do both. So if you look at uh, a school like KSTS in Kumasi, you go to Kumasi Secondary Technology, you're going to see that there has been a huge infrastructure intervention there. You go to Prempe College, other schools, and then STEM, uh, science labs have been built in a number of schools across the country. Ukwapemai Senior High School has a beautiful uh, science lab. 
Wesley Girls, we did six science lab at a go. Kumasi Angle Kem School, six science lab at a go. St. Louis, six science lab at a go. Hunter My Girls, six science lab at a go. So we have science lab that have been built across the country in existing schools. You go to Accra High, we built a STEM center there. So when students go to Accra High, now they have a, an option to do engineering sciences. So these are existing schools. So the intervention is not just in the new schools. Existing schools are seeing massive intervention in the area of STEM. So in addition to the STEM schools. And this is the stem school. We go to Precept with those science lab there. The church also built some science lab. But when you look so, at the numbers we have in the schools now, mm -hmm. so for example, I was at Presec uh, last November. Yes. And the last count, there were 5,400 students. There will be more now mm -hmm. because the form ones will be more. Mm -hmm. And when I look at the number of science teachers, uh -huh. there's still a lot of pressure on the system because the science classes, when I was in Presec in 96 to 98, there were four streams, A, B, C, and D. Uh -huh. When I went to Presec last month, uh -huh. there were 24 science classes for Form 2. Yes, so yes. if you have 24 science classes, uh -huh. the whole, when I was in Presec, it was a science school. Uh -huh. The whole science school is now just classrooms, uh -huh. right? It's been converted to normal classrooms. So uh -huh. my, the question is, is still there. How do you ensure that those 24 science classes in Form 2 mm. have access to labs, beakers, pipettes, burettes, and all these things in a way that builds STEM? Because it's a resource issue. Because you're saying you are doing both. How, the money you're using to build the new schools, uh -huh. couldn't a presec use more labs, more beakers, more pipettes, more burettes? Presec, because the classes are 24. You see, presec is getting more. But you see, one of the things that sometimes we overlook is the double track and what it does for us. You see, there are some people who say the double track, green, red, gold, and they deride it, right? But they don't look at what it has brought to presec, for example. Presec was about 3,000 plus. Now it's 5,000 plus. And yet, Presec is doing better than before the Free Senior High School. What is happening? What is in happening terms of is results? That, yes, what is happening is that at any point in time, Presec is just like Presec for Free Senior High School because two cohorts of students are there at a time. So if Presec used to be 3,005 before Free Senior High School, it's still 3,005 at any point in time. The other cohort is not in school. So the resources have not been overstretched the way that people think. The moment you hear 5,000 from 3,000, oh my God, mm. everything has been doubled. No, it's not the case. The double track was about the dual enrollment. Not necessarily that everything has been doubled. Okay. So if you go to Presec right now, the number of labs we added more, right? So it couldn't be, but you, you don't have the 24 classes it's because certain areas also be, uh, has been de-emphasized. But so, so the, for example, the 24 form twos mm -hmm. will be, the double track works in such that mm -hmm. form threes may be home, form mm -hmm. ones and twos are there, or vice versa. Mm -hmm. So the 24 signs will be there at the same time. Mm -hmm. So are you saying then that the labs they're that the not, form threes, not, not or, because you don't, you don't break the form twos yeah, into two. No. They, they Unless not, you're saying the form threes who are using the labs will be home, so the form twos will use their labs. No, what, what is happening is if you have 24 cohort, the 24 is not there at the same time. Form two, 24? No, no. No, what what, what, no, no. The form two, 24 will be there, there at the same time, yeah. But what has happened is that there has been a de emphasis on the arts, for example. This there year, are still six oh, arts yeah, classes. This year, this year. Six I business, asked, six arts. I was but, there. No, I mean, I know we had a discussion. I even, we even had uh, la, um, science lab technicians for them and, and then build a science lab for them. So if anything, what I'm trying to say is that there have been more science labs before the Free Senior High School. More has been added. And I'm grateful to the Presbyterian Church. Uh, they equipped, they did three of them. The government did three. Now we're giving them smart boards. <laughs> what I'm saying is that we have added more. So even if you have more cohorts, more has been added. So it's not as if... What about teachers? The resource, oh, teachers. We had more teachers. You can ask Presec. You see, um, this morning, I was looking at a list of teachers that have been hired for Wednesday Girls, for example. When they request and say, we need this, we do. Lab technicians have been hired for Presec you know, so that they can improve so, see, One of the things I would like you to do, if not now, but later, is to give me the average mm -hmm. student-to-teacher ratio for ratio. these schools. Because oh, yeah. you see... We are dealing with in a class of our 45. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And when you talk about science, you know that in the schools you were teaching in the US, you need to break them into smaller groups for learning to be effective. So if you have a 
a class teacher of science and he's mm. taking six classes and this class has 45 people mm. science practical teaching becomes very complicated right mm. so the person may do well in wasi mm -hmm. but you also know that the quality of a science product is not just how he calculates but can he do the experiments does he have but, enough but, but see, is there enough time on task for him to actually know how to do the thing let me tell you there has been enough and presec will prove everybody wrong that quality has diminished let me tell you when the school has said i've gone to prep time in the evenings at presec visited them i sat with the student night time during prep i look at the number of students who are in the classroom and they are steady i had a nice discussion with them at presec during prep time the school has a learning culture second to none so if anybody has doubts that academic performance have not improved go to presec and see no, I, I'm talking. I'm not talking so, about. I'm, so ta I'm talking about the facilities no, and the, how they will be no, adequate if, if, for if, learning. Oh, of course. The, but the bottom line, the outcome, right? Which if which, if, if, if it's negative, you shouldn't have positive outcome because they do practicals at the exams. It's science exams. They still, they still pass. It's not just tube or pass. You can do that. Mm. They do practicals, and you go there and you okay, see it. Enough. You see, whatever presec needs, and I don't want the community to be. No, I know it's an example. The case that, <laughs> because yeah. I was going to bring in O'Reilly. Yeah, what I wanted to do, yeah. what I wanted to ask uh -huh. you, which maybe not this, is yeah. to give us, uh -huh. since you have the results, which we are going to go into yeah. from 2015 to 2023. Mm -hmm. It's also be good to know the average teacher-student ratio for all the schools and how you've worked to improve that. The average class size, see, because I, I ask this because, for example, I have kids who go to private schools. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, the private schools that my child goes to, mm -hmm. they are about 21 in the class. And they have At what level? Class 5. Class 5. And, and they have about three teachers, oh. sometimes two teachers. Mm -hmm. There's a school at School Junction, I, drink, I, know. Mm -hmm. I have a friend who teaches in class 6 or so. Mm -hmm. They have about 80 students. Right? I'm coming home. Mm -hmm. And those 80 students is one teacher. So, I, I'm, you see, there's, the, the child from this Adjungano school may pass. But the content of what my boy will get with two teachers with 21 is obviously intrinsically better. So if we simply say they've passed and therefore they've had a good education, we have to qualify it, which is why I'm trying to say to you that things like student-teacher ratio, the time on task, the facilities available all go into quality. Quality is multifunctional, not just the result. And do, you know this better do, than do I do. you know the, uh, the teacher-student ratio for junior high schools in Ghana? One is to 12. The lowest in the world. Public junior yes. high schools. Public junior high. One is to twelve. In Ghana. Yes. On which 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 numbers? Which which what, year? Which year? This year. Well, I'm, 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 averages are interesting, no, right? No, it's not interesting. Because let some let schools can have eighty and some no, schools have two. Let, let me say so that. an average is not no, there. No, because yeah. at junior high school is departmentalized. You have thirteen teachers, eight or three. No, but I'm talking about primary school. No, no, but, I'm about but, primary school. but in primary schools I've visited. I went to Dominic Kwabenya Primary School. Two teachers in a class. So what's the also average in, primary in, school in, ratio? It's about primary. one is to thirty-five. And in one most, is to thirty-five. Yes, in most junior uh, primary schools in Accra, for example, yeah. you have two teachers in a class. Mm. It's never one. So, so the bottom line is this: mm. if you want to look at student-teacher ratio mm. and 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 teacher-student ratio, whichever mm. way you look at it, mm. it's not that high. Mm. However, mm. you may have a situation where uh, there are outliers. Mm -hmm. So I won't sit here and say. There's no place where maybe the assisted student there's one teacher. No. But typically, when you go to a school where there are more students in a the class, there are two teachers. And I've seen it over and over again. Mm -hmm. Where I went to Tamil, to visit Sakasaka, I went to the school, there were two teachers in a class. And sometimes I thought maybe one could have even done the work. But there are two teachers in a class. So I'm not saying there are no outliers, there are no extreme cases. Mm. But for the most part, when the students exceed a certain number, uh, they have two teachers. But you see, the, the bottom line is this. If you look at the student-teacher ratio and you look at what has happened in the junior high schools, for example, mm. it will tell you that junior high schools, for example, has one of the lowest teacher-student ratios in the world. Because, one is because it's subject-based. Yes, it's subject-based. It's, it's, like, yes. it's not like a class... That is it. Mm. So, so the bottom line for us is that the transformation of public schools. I, I went to Asim in Kumasi West, and there are six students in a class. Mm. Six students in a class, five class. Asokwa, you have 13 students in a class, five class. So, so yes, there are outliers in certain communities where it has been impacted in terms of the population and in terms of availability of maybe classrooms. But it's not across the board that 
in a public school, um, or public school of Accra. In fact, there are some places where we need to make sure more students go there. So if you look at our public school transformation, and you begin to look at the infrastructure development that is going on now, the support of the Arab development, major intervention is going on. There's a, there's, and I'll come back to the result. There's a strong view that uh, primary education has suffered under free SHS. Um, in terms of release of resources. Indeed, the World Bank's, um, the IMF's uh, analysis of our economy, as they gave us a three billion, mm -hmm. they said a number of things. Mm -hmm. And they said key areas of potential improvement of education spending include strengthening primary education resources. So this re echoes what a lot of people have been saying. What is your comment on the view that primary education seems to have gone under the radar because the emphasis has been on free secondary education? I'll tell you one thing. See, when you look at the pot of money that comes to education, just don't look at the government budget. We have 200 million that is being invested in basic schools through Gallup. It's a World Bank project. Ghana Accountability for Learning Outcomes project, Gallup, has brought in over 200 million. And this goes, this goes into yes, what? Is it the capitation? Schools. Is no, it the feeding? Yes. Because those are the areas Various, of concern. Yeah. Various areas. Because it could For be example, programs. It could be teacher improvement programs. No, and it's under the 200 million. Not really. Learning grants, which is an addition, a top-up of the capitation grant. But the average amount you spend per student as government on a primary secondary, a primary child, is what we'll be looking no, no, at, right? What, what, what the point I'm making, uh, Bernard, is that don't just look at the body okay. and say this is what is going on. Mm. The supplementary activities that take place, the additional funding mm. that come into certain sectors. Mm -hmm. If you look at the intervention by the Arab Development Bank, mm -hmm. infrastructure intervention, uh, and if you look at what it's happened, the various towns and communities that are getting new primary schools and new junior high schools. I have the list here. Many of them, many communities are getting new infrastructure supported by the, uh, the, the Arab Development Bank. We have Gallup intervention for infrastructure. A number of communities, about 74 communities are all getting new schools. The old dilapidated schools are going to be demolished. I look at Adobe Brakwa, there's a town called Sampane. Uh, they were going to school in touch roof buildings, and now next to that building is a new building. But, but look, up. one of the flagships so, of mm -hmm. President Kufour was mm -hmm. a capitation grant, which we know helped to increase enrollment at the basic level. Mm -hmm. And then he added the school feeding program. Yes. The amount we give for capitation per child for basic education is very small. But you see, it has been doubled since we came to power. So for 50. Now it's over 10 CDs. But that doesn't but mean it's enough. 10 CDs is it, so no, small. But, but we started from somewhere. And now the 10,000 low-performing schools had a top-up through the learning grant from Gallup. So they are getting about two times more on top of the capitation. Does this go directly to the schools? Oh, yes, go directly to the head of the school. It goes that they have... Not for accounts. program funding, no, but no, for no, their no, main no. budget. Learning grant. Learning grant. Yes, learning grant. You can ask anybody about learning grant. Learning grants go to schools directly. And a number of them have used those monies very well. Some have bought furniture and other things with it. And many of the schools, the World Bank just recently came. They did their mission. They went to the schools to check how the learning grants are being utilized by the head of schools. It goes directly to the schools. What about the school feeding amount? School feeding doesn't go through us, of course. But it affects your outcome. So you are interested in it. Of course. I'm interested in it. But we don't administer it. Yes. It goes through it, gender. Fair, fair enough. But if you look at the amount they give for a child, because again, we know that for many poor parents, if the child has a hot meal a day, they will go to school. So you are quite interested in that. They are, the the caterers have you been see, complaining there's, there's massively interest. about the delay in payment, the times they say they don't, have, they don't cook. It's been a major news item for the past few months. Yeah, and I, I've just told you, of course, it impacts me, but uh, another ministry is in charge of it, and I know they are doing their very best. Recently, I heard they are releasing some funds. Would you ask December. for it to be increased, the, cap the, 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 the feeding uh, amount? Anybody in education will want more resources. But have you done that? Schools. I, I mean, a conversation between me and another minister, how can I say it? No, so we know that you are interested in it. Because, no, no, I, I, because you see, we, we've, made a lot of, we've made a lot of comment about free SHS. The basic school is the, the feeding through. So if the child drops off at basic, then he doesn't even benefit from free SHS. So, so let me tell you what we are doing at the basic level. I have my basic primary school getting a new building, Bremi Junior High School getting a mm. new building, Kenya, say, I, Mohun. These are major... I notice you are mentioning specific schools, but yes. I'm asking the... Overall, because you see, if you increase the capitation or increase the school feeding, then it goes across board. 
there are nice examples that you can show yes. but the country is very big as you know yes, so course. it will be easier for you if you said to me that we have increased the capitation by 20 percent and for that reason it, this it has increased by e that it, it but, will be easier for me to tell you this bernard a ministry that i don't control i mean how can we i sit in front of you and say something about a ministry whose project i don't control yeah that can benefit me i can come on your show and start talking about another ministry's programs. No, mm -hmm. I will talk to my colleague, and I'm sure he'll be very okay, but, happy. But there, are, but there are things under your control. There are things like textbooks under mm -hmm. your control, yes. school uniforms yes. and things. Uh, yes, yes. What is the status of textbooks for the basic schools, for under the new curriculum? Basic schools, we have core textbooks in primary schools. Mm -hmm. uh, we also have junior high school textbooks that we did by the end of the month will be hitting the classrooms uh, for book one, book two, and book three. So it's not something that we are grossing over in. Why did it take so long? The, the, the new curriculum came out and for a year, the textbooks were not ready. No, I mean, let me tell you. You always have to look at the processes for uh, textbooks. Uh, they, they give them a learning package, a manual that teachers use, and then the publisher, the writers, will also take that and start developing their curriculum, go to procurement. But the good news is that it's coming to the classrooms and i love for you to be at one of the classrooms when they are receiving the books. But that, that's, I mean, so if a whole year has gone without textbooks, that's not right. Learning packages were given out for teachers to teach with. Now the books are coming, Bernard. But the, the, so, the, but so, the textbooks are meant, again, my kids, the textbooks are used at home. Help parents help to teach. So the learning guide is good for the teacher, but learning also takes place in the home. So the good the news is that textbooks are hitting the classroom, Bernard. But who, and I want you to come and observe. So whose responsibility is for the delay? Is it your responsibility? I mean, I mean, as a minister, I take responsibility for good things and bad things in my ministry. So if you have a challenge with anything, I take for Was it financial or just procurement? The good news is that books are hitting the classroom. We want to understand what went wrong. No, I, I'm telling so that we you. Can, we, so we can, we can Bernard, prevent. I think what, I was it a procurement a, issue? We, 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 a process. Procurement takes time. You cannot just go and say, I've selected you. Bring the books. You know there's a process that you have to go through. It's not under our authority. You have to go through an agency to get it approved. It takes time. So I won't blame anybody for it, but I say the process takes some time. Secondary schools as well, some of the schools didn't have some of the, for example, they didn't have their clothes. They didn't have their uniforms. I was in the school and they were all wearing white, white. Their school uniforms had not come in. So they've gone to form two, the whole of form one, they didn't have school uniforms in some schools. What, 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 what I, I can find out more about that. But, but I'm sure you're aware. I, you're aware of this? Not in all cases. I mean, I'm the minister, but it doesn't mean I will know every specific detail that is taking place in every school. There are some places that may come to my attention, others may not come to my attention, because you see, the procurement is done by the schools themselves. We pay for it, but procurement of uniforms and other things are done by the schools. Uh, so that is an area where we share responsibility that we don't want to do centralized procurement. Procure your uniforms, and when it's supplied to you, you bring the invoices, the SRS, and we pay. The Charles has said that you should allow them to directly control food supply because the current system is delay, has, is affected by delays and stuff like this. I'm sure you've heard them address that at their conference and also repeated it as... I was there on the platform. Yes. What's your response to them? I responded, and my response is very simple. Mm. Uh, you know, once upon a time, there was something called the school feeding program, the North. It was controlled by the schools. Yeah. And every now and then, schools were shut down. So it's not a panacea <laughs> that the fact that you control it means that there will be no glitches. That's not the point. The point of the matter is that you set up systems and you improve, improve upon it. For example, last year, we did a procurement and it was sent to certain locations in the regions and it's been working. So the bottom line is that it's not so much about if I control, then everything will be great. If that was the case, during the time of the Northern School Feeding Program, there were great they, challenges. They said they want to buy their own food. They wanted to take uh, the um, buffer stock out of the process for, because for at least for the past two years, there have been delays that we've all seen. And, and that is why we brought in another entity. Commodity has changed. They've done a fantastic job. Tucci and her team has done a great job supplying food to school. So uh, the fact that one agency has failed doesn't mean you cannot complement the efforts of government with another agency, which is also a government agency. And Community Exchange has done a fantastic job complementing the Air Force of buffer stock. Mm. So last year, around this time, there was a lot of complaint about food shortage. So far this year, so are you attributing the change to the... the Community Exchange. They've done a fantastic job. And I think, you see, 
we started Why? small. What, what was, is it because they have the more capacity. money? Or what's no, the it's not about the money, but the capacity, right, of uh, of buffer stock was at a point overstretched. Because we started small, now you are talking about feeling about 1.4 million. And consequently, one agency may not have the capacity to do everything. So I was happy uh, when we came to the conclusion that mm. commodity exchange should be part of the mix. And as you said, yeah. uh, their participation have, uh, has actually led to a marked improvement. All right. Let me do one last thing in this area before we move to the next thing. Mm -hmm. D December 12th last year, Charles demands urgent funds furniture for senior high schools. The conference urged the GS and the ministry to pr prioritize two critical issues funding shortages and furniture deficiencies in senior high schools across the country. With both third year and first year students returning to school on January 3rd, Charles President Reverend Father Stephen Osu Setre highlighted the urgency of addressing these concerns. He revealed widespread complaints from heads of schools in all regions, citing a lack of funding and insufficient food supplies, unquote. Okay, I, I think you, you mentioned food supplies and I explained that. Now let's move on to furniture. I wish you can put on the headmaster of Okuapimai Senior High School, Mansell's College. They've all received furniture this weekend. That's Okuas. Yeah. He says, the, they are mean, the man says, schools across the whole no, country. No, but we are, we are sending furniture to schools. Not so how many schools? School. Uh, the list that they brought me have about 200 schools that are getting furniture. And it's going. They look at the capacity there and they send the furniture. You can call a number. We'll send you the list of schools that have received furniture and they are very happy. Uh, some of them send me uh, WhatsApp messages saying, Minister, I'm so happy. And they'll give me the pictures. There are pictures of it that you can show. What about disbursement of funds to the schools? A disbursement of funds, you see, we have different components. The funds to the school is mainly in the form of the perishables. And it's been going. This week, more funds are going. So uh, it's, it's an issue where uh, it's a cash flow management. Money comes in, you disperse to make sure headmasters get the money that they need to buy the perishable item because the food supplies are going from commodity exchange and is going from buffer stock. And then there's a portion that goes directly to the headmaster, which we call the perishables, to buy the tomatoes and the pepper and all those items. And, and, and that goes to them so that they can uh, do the work uh, that they do very well. I mean, headmasters a fantastic group of individuals who have done so much uh, for the success of the education system. And, and consequently, there are people that I always uh, commend because they've done a very good job. I was at a school where the headmaster said that for a school of their size, they have to mm -hmm. buy prepaid credit with their own money. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they have to assemble the students in one hall to study because they don't have enough credit. Would it be, what's your solution to such a thing where schools see, are, are on prepaid? The, the, the thing is this, our preference was postpaid so that we paid. We, we paid directly for all those who are doing the postpaid. But ECG had a policy that they will not allow us to do the postpaid and they want to put all schools on prepaid. So what we have uh, done and uh, done now is that we are using the, uh, the amount of money they spent the previous year and we are advancing, this year we are advancing the monies. And then after they buy the prepaid, they will account for it. Because it was just a question of not knowing. If it's postpaid, the bill comes in and we pay. When it's prepaid, you don't know how much they are going to use. So now that we know how much they've been using, what I directed that they do is to advance their monies. And once they purchase, they will have to reconcile. Mm. Because that's the only way. Other than that, mm. we're also looking at a system that will allow us to pay into their prepaid system. All right. But they say the technology is not there for mm. us to pay and for the credit to go directly to the schools electronically. Mm. So now the best way out is to be able to advance the money. And, and then after they buy the prepaid, then they reconcile the amount against how much uh, they purchased. Uh, it's, it's, a bit, it's a bit disappointing that yeah. ECG will not understand you because it feels like if a school, such a big, big school, would have to have prepaid, it, it doesn't make sense. Let's read some comments, then I'll come to Free SHS again because I know that there are comments about the performance of the students, issues around WASI, mm -hmm. and then the calls for review. But Nick, Caleb has some texts. Yes, comments. Bernard. Good morning, Bernard. Please ask the minister when the rest of teachers will receive their laptops after several years of deductions of the cost from our salaries. Is there a name to that? Sami from Accra. Okay. Sami is a teacher. He's not happy. Good morning, Ooh. CTCBS. Sami, send your name. Send the name of your school. Sami, please yeah, add your school as well. Them. Yes, Thank go ahead. You. Yeah. Good morning. I am a teacher with a private school and with your kind permission, I want to ask the minister to explain 
uh, the exams basic nine learners will be writing this year and to also find out about the AWAP subject. Take, take, take your time. Take your time. Said so okay. he wants the minister to explain more about the exam, the basic nine, nine learners, learners will, be writing, will be writing this year. And to also, is, basic nine is that GSS3? GSS3. So he's talking about BC. Yeah, BC. 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 Yeah. Good. So I think there was a controversy about whether the service will be used to five or not. There was a controversy where one of your directors went to say that the BC will be five subjects. He misspoke. He misspoke, so he's wrong. Spoke too early. So it's not a decision you've no. been taking. Okay. okay. Bernard, um, a box, Hefron is asking, he says the minister promised to streamline the SHS system. We have not seen anything in that light. What are the plans put in place to streamline? I believe this is about the double track system and when it's ending, perhaps. Mm. You know, okay, the last okay, time... Okay, okay, two things. You know, English West Armenia, there's streamline, <laughs> there's review, <laughs> and there's cancel. <laughs> but what I wanted to point out to, to you, though, was that the, you, you had said in 2018 that double track would be for five we'll be years. Ending in five but years. We, are, we, are in the, we are in the seventh year of double track. It's not ended. No. Double track started in 2018. We didn't say five years. I'll check. It was reported it five widely. Years. Five uh, years. I was there in Tamale when the president said. But seven years is still 2024. Yeah. So will double track end this year? Most of the schools are transitioning. Will it end this no, year? No, I'm saying most of them are. I have to look at the number. But if but you most, say you most some, schools, if, most schools are transitioning. There are what? so many schools still doing double track. Forty percent. That's that. That's they've, they've come fits. from. They've we flipped from sixty percent yeah. now going to forty. But if forty percent are still doing double track, you can't tell me and that. The, you see, the, thing, the rule of thumb. The, the rule of thumb is very simple. I, I want quality pre sec education for more students. If I can put in more infrastructure pre sec. I end double track. We are not saying end double track. So, we are saying so, admit that you couldn't end it in the time you said you end it. No, the you said you end it in five years. Why, why do I have what? to come and sit here and admit? Because that's what that's what that's that's what leadership does. My, no, when you can't do it, you say I you have, couldn't do no, it. I have to look at my numbers. You post me the post the question to me right now. I have to go to my staff and let them do a review for me. But it's something you, talk it, to it, you. No, but dog, <laughs> double track is something that's on your radar every day. It's not something you needed. If if you said you've end double track in five years and you've not post a question to me which you have not previously obviously asked me to prepare for. I'm here on your show. And you want me to answer on the show. Bernard, come on. So you you, you, okay, you give me you an answer. An, you are an astute news person and okay. you should know. So you come back and give me an answer. Bernard, yeah, while, while the person. labs Yes. While the labs for Presec have increased over the years, uh, in O'Reilly Senior High School, they use the same lab, and if they are doing chemistry, the physics class must wait for them O'Reilly. to finish it. Yeah. That's his former school. So, I'm, he, I'm oh, no, but, yeah, I know you've been so there. So, you're saying well. they don't have enough labs? I'm, at all. And infrastructure I'm is glad, very. I'm glad very, you're very, telling me. Yes. Where is O'Reilly? O'Reilly is at Okwegono. It's a public school? Yeah. Onabo has been there. His deputy knows the place very so well. So they have not they have not added any laps at all. Unlike Presec. O'Reilly has been sidelined. O'Reilly has been neglected see, for too long. We should have talked about Presec. Yeah. You see, now, now he's talking about O'Reilly. We are in trouble. All right. We'll still read some comments. <laughs> and when we come back, we'll talk about Presec. Yes. So go ahead. Please ask the Minister for Education why teacher trainee universities are also running shift systems like yeah. the SHS education system not. message from they the Tosi no. Ray. They defended it. They did it previously after the COVID. Yeah. So, so, so you know, just to be clear, so yeah. teacher training colleagues are not running you can say on authority yes. all right okay good morning bernard and uh, good morning to you honorable during an interview with professor yanka on this same network he spoke about an attempt of making those who had d7 and e8 in the wasi get access to university education but since then nothing has mm -hmm. been said about that please ask the minister what he is doing or going to do mm -hmm. about that my name is edmund mm -hmm. a concerned citizen from nungwa take note of that minister will answer yes. that question good morning ben can you please ask the minister to explain why uh children going to form two now did only about four over five out of 12 months in school last year and are repeating same thing in form two according to the timetable. I have two kids from, uh, I have two kids, form one going to form two in March. What are these children learning? Why? Meanwhile, the current form ones are going to be in school for almost five months. I think he's talking about the duration they are spending so in let me school. Try and understand and why, let me try and understand the point. Yeah. He's saying that it's they did so only four or five out of 12 months, months. in school last year yeah. mm -hmm. and the form twos are also doing only four or five months mm -hmm. out of 12. Yeah. he has kids from form one going to form two in march what will they be learning so basically saying that they spend more time at home than at school yeah. for which level are they? he says form, form one and form, form two, two from last year from which level check shs is he, no is that what he said no this is yeah is, is, he, is, there, is he referring to this is this is this is shs yeah. He's talking about single track schools. No, yes. right, single right. track. It cannot be. The single, single track, track yeah. No, no, he says something about No, so, yes, it's, it's, so he said, meanwhile, the current form... So let's go through this again. Yeah. Let's go through this again. Good morning. Can you please ask the minister to explain why the children going to form two now 
did only about four it's or five true. out of 12 months in school last year. And I repeat the same thing in Form 2 according to the timetable. Yeah. I have two kids from mm. 1 going to Form 2 in March. Mm. What are these kids learning? Meanwhile, the current Form 1s are going to be in school for almost five months at a go. Full stop. Why are single-track schools doing more time in school than those in double-track schools? Aren't they writing the same exam? Single-track schools are not inhibited. Uh, by virtue of the fact that you don't have any cohort that is waiting at home. Right? No, it says they are doing more so, time in school. Yeah, they are doing more time. But you know, the interesting thing about single trial schools that they invariably, 90% of them are the low performing schools that need more intervention. You have students who go there with very high aggregates that we all complain about. So there's an opportunity for them to do more intervention for them so they can perform just like anybody else. So I think it's a real opportunity that we are taking advantage of that a uh, majority of the students going to double are the ones who go like a 35 and 40. Now they have opportunity for intervention and to do more time to catch up. So I think more time in school is not a bad thing uh, for schools that we know are receiving students who generally go there with uh, lower grades. So it's an opportunity for them to do. But the, I think the, the question at the end was then that if somebody's in a double track school, actually, they have less time in no, class. No, it's not true. Than see, those. The timetable you, you said was clear. I, I was. If you look at the timetable, what the timetable doesn't tell you is the instructional hours. And sometimes they do the calculation beneath it. You see, in a double trial school, the day is longer. Mm. See, consequently, okay. every day okay. you are adding one hour more. Every week we have five hours more mm. of instruction. So you add it on okay. and then you do the instructional hour calculation and they haven't lost anything. So that should be made clear on the timetable they sent to us. That is, that is very true. I think because they only give us the dates. The dates. So if you look at the dates, you're going to get to a certain conclusion. But what you don't know mm. or you may not see on the paper is the instructional hours. The fact that they spend... And By the way, are, are, are teachers in the double track schools getting any extra pay for working more than you see, those in You see, the thing is this. Most teachers in double track schools don't work more. How? And I'll say most. You see, we've aligned teachers their vacation with the vacation of the students. So if you go to most of the schools, most of the schools, and I won't say all, uh, you have situations where when the students are on vacation, the teachers are on vacation. Because I, but in I know places, a teacher who teaches economics, no, in and he some, teaches both tracks. I, I mean, I know a teacher. I spoke to him personally. Be, he teaches both tracks. He hasn't had a there, break. But it's not the norm. It's not the norm. Well, not there's the norm. actually a question on our Facebook stream, mm -hmm. Theophilus Quays. So add that here. Yes, he says, teachers have been completely left out in the free SHS policy. We teach mm -hmm. all year round. Some heads are not allowing teachers to be on a year group, so they go on break. So, so Theophilus yeah. Quays says, says some, some, teachers, some schools, teachers, yes. Yeah. Some schools, but the instruction to headmasters is that every teacher deserves their break. Mm -hmm. And therefore, when the, their students are going on vacation, they should go on vacation with them. There may be some cases where the, the head may have a unique situation where a teacher may move from one track to the other, but not under normal circumstances, mm -hmm. teachers should go on vacation with their students. So, so maybe GS should be able to give you a list of the schools that have that. So you that will have, know... That have a chance. Yeah, so the, I hope your team is listening. Yeah, because I was, list, I was talking to um, a teacher who said, He's the head of department. He was concerned. Yeah. And therefore, during break, instead of taking his break, he will go and support yeah. the other teachers. Yeah. But he also said that it wasn't mandatory, yeah. but he felt that yeah. his expertise was needed mm. at the grade level uh, whose students were in school. Okay. So a number of teachers are sacrificing. But I also know that um, in some schools, mm -hmm. um, when you don't have a full complement of cohorts, for example, some schools may have very few science students mm. on both, uh, uh, in all the grade levels, from one, from two, from three. All right. So you may have a situation where somebody may be doing that, but it's not the norm. Let's deal with the D7E8 university admission yeah, question, admission. which I think you took note of. The, Professor Yanka had tried yeah. to negotiate with the university to allow that. Mm -hmm. Somehow, there's still some reluctance there. What's your, what do you know you about see, the issue? You see, the, the thing is this. Um, D7 does not prevent you from doing a diploma. Okay. D7 okay. doesn't prevent students from doing diploma. Mm. Uh, for degree programs, uh, the core subjects, there are some restrictions. Mm -hmm. And the current position that GTEC mm -hmm. uh, uh, is now... Mm -hmm. Are considering to allow for next year's enrollment is the fact that you have, let's say, D7 in mathematics. Uh -huh. The whole idea is that it's telling the program 
especially where mathematics is very much needed, that you are weak in the subject. So the compromise is that mm -hmm. you do math 99, mm -hmm. which is a below university mathematics class that we used to do called post O level mathematics. Post O level mathematics was not a university level mathematics course, but we're doing it in land economy. We're doing it because they felt that you did not do A level mathematics, and because you did not do A level mathematics, you need a stronger foundation in mathematics, and therefore do post O level mathematics. There were a number of degree programs at tech that were doing post O level mathematics. In essence, these were not college level mathematics. It was beyond O-level mathematics, almost like you were repeating A-level on campus. So the so the diploma. Your point is that the compromise is that the D7E8 can do a diploma if they get a good grade, they can then do a degree to follow up. That is acceptable now, mm, but okay. we're also saying for them to do degree, yeah, uh, what they can also do mm -hmm. is to create a situation where that student mm -hmm. will do math 99 or something like post O-level math because. The point of the matter is that you are saying that you need mathematics in order to do well in this subject. Don't stop the student from coming, but rather say, because you got D7 in mathematics, unlike your peers who are not doing post O level math or not doing mathematics 99, which is pre university mathematics, you have to do pre university mathematics. So I think that will, that will assure the universities that we are not lowering any standards. Yeah. But at the same time, we are allowing the students to come in so somebody get English. E8. Mm -hmm. Instead of saying you cannot come at all, mm -hmm. you're going to say you're going to do pre-university English mm. so that we know your English has been strengthened enough for you to do the subject that you've been offered to do. Mm. So that is the current GTEC position that will be coming out. Yeah. So that there was a question about colleges of education running track, double track, which mm -hmm. said it was not true. But we, they stopped. Yes, but there are other concerns about colleges of education. Mm -hmm. For example, we know that the admissions have reduced from 20,000 per academic year to 12,000 for last year. 20,000. So the College of Education admissions reduced from about 20K per academic year mm -hmm. to 12,000 2023. This is because of limited infrastructure. There were about 46 hostel projects that should have been completed in 2023. Mm -hmm. But 43 of the 46 are at foundation level with only three ongoing. Mm -hmm. Classroom projects have equally stopped because there's no cash. It is estimated that the government requires about 480 million to complete these projects. But government spent between 220 million, government spent only 220 million last year on teacher allowance. So my, my question is, the reduction in admission for college of education is an infrastructure issue. No, you see, it's not an infrastructure issue. It's not an infrastructure issue. The, the issue is this. This is what people have not averted their minds to. Once upon a time, there were three cohorts of them, level 100, 200, and 300. Now we've gone to level 400. Because the year is four. Yes. So, so there's the an infrastructure increase, problem. No, 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 no. It's big if problem. you don't understand how and you assume that the situation is the same. So there are more people, they are, yes. they are spending longer time in school. Yes. So they don't have enough so, space. No, no, no. The issue is very simple. I think that your listeners should understand why. Why they don't have the space. Yes. Mm. So, so it doesn't necessarily mean the number of students enrolled at a table has gone down. The total enrollment has not gone down. The total enrollment at the colleges of education, the total enrollment. But you're going to see that because the level 400 student, instead of graduating, they are still there. So you reduce the admission. So therefore, the first year student numbers have to be adjusted. That's for what the we are saying. Four, four years. levels to exist. Yeah. So it doesn't mean the total enrollment in yeah. colleges of education. So they are spending one more year at school. Yes. And therefore, so, so what we need to understand is this. Mm. The fact that the level 100 enrollment has gone down doesn't mean the total enrollment. But you know why I'm asking this? Of education have gone. So once, we, once mm. we understand that, then you build yeah. on. But look, when you look at the growth mm -hmm. in student numbers, mm -hmm. you expect a proportional growth in teacher numbers. So if, teacher num if, if new teacher admissions has reduced by 8,000, mm -hmm. you should be concerned because that then means that as these students come in, the population pyramid is big at the base. You're going to have a challenge with having good teachers to deal with these, these students. No, Bernard, that, that's the point. No, it's you are spending a, more time training the teachers, Bernard, but you're having fewer teachers enter. Bernard, that's the fact. That's, no, I'm just, no, it's not the fact. I just what, give you the numbers. No, Bernard, what you probably have not averted your mind to, right? yeah. and I'll give you credit for You've done a good job uh, researching and, mm. and interrogating me. But Bernard, you should also know 
that the vast majority of the teachers being trained in this country at this point are not from colleges of education. They are from the universities. The universities are doing basic education. They are bringing out more graduates through the distance learning program, now have private colleges of education. The number of teachers being trained in this country, the vast majority mm. are not from the colleges of education. It would be nice if you gave me some numbers oh, yes. to I'll say what percentage you. of I'll, your I'll teachers you are from yeah. universities and, and what percentage are from yes. colleges of so education. So when you go to uh, Cape Coast University, yeah. they do a bachelor's in basic education. Yeah. These students are being prepared for mm. primary and junior high schools. Mm. The same way the colleges of education are preparing teachers for primary and junior high schools. So the fact that you've reduced the enrollment doesn't mean mm. yeah. that you don't have enough teachers to fill the spots in the classroom. Okay. What it means is that you're going to hire more of them from the, the pool C could it be that the universities. Could, could it be that you are trying to de-emphasize or you're trying to increase the ratio of those university trained teachers because maybe the licensure exam performance has been poor. Because I'm told that, for example, 30% of teachers who sat for the licensure exam failed. So could those outcomes but be determined? 30% of teachers who sat 30. for the licensure exam well, failed. Why are you not saying 70% passed? Well, because teachers are, well, <laughs> the bottle have empty, better, right? Better, but these are teachers. Say, these are teachers. No, these are teachers. That's why you should be happy that the 70 pass at a goal, really? we are working on the 30 so that they can get it because it's not the end of the road. They can reset. it. Mm. So I, as education, I'm very happy mm. to know that you have a system that is working and those who did not make it the first time has opportunity to come in. When they come in, we are fully assured mm. that they are good and they are going to... So the license exam will remain? Of course. It's to remain. You see, the thing is this. Bernard, I, I, I think all of us, mm. uh, those of you who are researching and asking us questions, mm. and the general Ghanaian population need to understand something. Mm -hmm. I'm a teacher at the core. Our profession sometimes does not get the respect that we demand. Mm. Nobody can say that doctors should not be examined any longer. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to teachers, some politicians will come and say, we'll, we'll cancel it. We want the recognition that other professions are also getting. We want to say that we are consumer professional just like anybody else. Mm. So if it's good for the nurses to be licensed and for other professors, why are you telling us teachers mm. that we shouldn't be licensed and that you cancel it? Let, let me tell you, mm -hmm. uh, my brother, let, let me set the record straight. There are more teachers coming from colleges of education mm -hmm. who equally qualify to teach in our schools. Mm. So if the number somehow goes down the college of education, you are getting more from the university. Ghana happens to be one of the few countries in the world where we have we don't have teacher shortage in terms of the supply of teachers. And it's because of the you have two work. tracks, colleges yes. and then the universities. Yes, the universities. Mm. And they are all bringing our graduates mm. who we select from, we recruit from. Mm -hmm. So it's not the case that somehow uh, if you reduce the number that goes to college for education, it's going to occasion a shortage of teachers. Let's look at the WASI results. And Bernard, the maybe before then, on the recruitment, yes, quick there's question. a quick one that came. Yeah. It says, can you please ask the minister about the situation of teachers trained by the universities, i.e. EUW, UEW and the likes. Mm. Our batch completed in 2021 and the portal has not been open for us to apply for wow. teaching. I would be glad yeah. if there is any good news for yeah. us this yeah. year. Yeah. We are waiting to get into the classroom. For two so, years. Yes, yes. because the thing is this. If you go to colleges of education, we have to hire you. You go to the universities on a need basis, depending upon shortages. So it's not automatic. And this makes the point that we have more teachers and the reduction in the number going to cut does not necessarily occasion a, a shortage of uh, teachers in the country. I think you were talking about the... Yes, like what's the results? The so the results? The couple of things. Mm -hmm. You have put out a chart mm -hmm. which shows aggregate percentage past A1 to C6 in core subjects. Mm -hmm. And by that, you're saying that Mm -hmm. The free SHS is working mm -hmm. because the percentage from 2018 to mm -hmm. 2023 mm -hmm. is much much higher than the percentage before. Um, can you elaborate? And why should think, why should the pass be the only basis? I think we have the figure on the on the screen for those watching. In, in a country where for those watching on, on investing on in their children's education to pass the BC to go to high school, <laughs> why should the pass rate not be something that parents are interested in? How do you get to the university? How do you get students selected for medicine, engineering, and other courses without a pass on the WASI? So ultimately, the outcome is critical to our nation's future, just like any other country. The SATs are critical 
to American students. So the WASI scores should be of great importance to our parents. So when it's going well, we should celebrate it. Uh, if you look Let's at... Let's look at the figures carefully. 2015, mm -hmm. English language, 42%. Mm -hmm. Passed in mm -hmm. English, A1 to C6. 2016, 51.6. 2017, 52.2. 2017, 52.25. Mm -hmm. So the first... VSHS cohort, you can say, was 2018. No, no. Oh? Not 2018. No, no, please. So 2020. 2020. Sorry, sorry, sorry. 2018 was 46.79. Yeah. I have it. 2019, 49.06. And then 2020 was 57. Yes. Point. And, and you can look at the cohort. 2020, 2020, no subject had below 50%. From 2020? Yes. Onwards. And then you can look at 2015. 45.2% in English. 2023, 73.11. And it has been, there has been a consistent growth. You look at integrated science, 28.7% in 2015. Mm -hmm. And now it's 662 mm -hmm. Mathematics, 2015, 32.4%. And now it's 62.23%. Social study, 57.4%. Now it's 76 What has accounted for this increase, and this number, improvement? A number of factors. But the first thing is the removal of cost barrier. If you talk to headmasters, they will tell you that during the first week of school, majority of the students are here. Before free senior high school, parents who could not afford it, their kids were at home two weeks, three weeks, four mm. weeks, looking for money before they could go. Okay. Uh, there, there has been a time in this country where students were sent home to go and collect their fees to do WASI registration, and they couldn't come back. That is over. The students now have the peace of mind. If they can't study, it's not about the fact that it's a cost issue. So the cost remover and then the increase in contact hours also has a lot to do because when students get to school the first week instead of the fourth week, they are having more contact hours uh, with, with teachers. Then you talk about intervention in the area of textbooks that were distributed across the board uh, to schools in the country. Uh, core textbooks, and this year all science students are going to get textbooks uh, for every subject area. So there have been many interventions. And then, once upon a time, there was something called extra classes. It was for those who could afford to pay. If you didn't have money, you did not get the extra classes. Now, every year, we pay $65 million to be distributed among teachers for the extra work that they do with the students. So the poor student... So the extra the, class is paid for by the state? By the state. Uh, this week, we are sending out $65 million to be shared among teachers for the work they did last year, 65 million. Every year we've consistently paid. And that provides opportunity for students to get extra classes for free on our campuses. That was not the case before free senior high school. Does that include also the procurement of past questions for them? We did it some years back. We are no longer doing it because I, I believe that now we are in a technological era where you can go online and have opportunity. So the last two years, there have not been the past questions. Because so you've spoken about the, the removal of the cost barrier. You've spoken about the extra classes. Yes. So those are the two most important. And Is training it, of it? teachers by examiners. Training of teachers by examiners. examiners. So we get examiners who go around the country and they train the teachers. And then you also had a program called the Secondary Education Improvement Project, funded by the World Bank, started under the NDC. We continued and we completed. And the World Bank will tell you that's one of the most successful interventions. Science teachers were trained across the country by seasoned teachers. And then there was something called the iBox. You see, uh, top-notch teachers across the country were videotaped teaching various lessons. And it was placed on a service in various high schools where you go and it emits Wi-Fi signals. And therefore, with a computer in any one of the schools, you're able to watch the preserved quality chemistry teacher instruction. So you may be a Jache Pram, so but it doesn't mean that you cannot get access to quality biology instruction from a teacher somewhere in Wesley Girls. So you're saying that these three interventions have accounted for the, the, the upward curve of WASI performances, which you believe will continue. So, will continue. so if you look at, for example, maths, 2020, 65. 2021, it came down to 54, but it's still about 50. 2022, 61. 2023, 62. So the trend has been established about 50. Yes. The trend, it has been across the board. And, and also, look at what was happening in this country. Uh, during President Kufour's era, where they changed the high schools to four years, that is when this performance was possible. 
The four years. Are you contemplating doing that again? No, <laughs> because the three years is doing the magic. But you've done that for the college the, education. The three, the three years. But is it not making it, us overly examination focused? Again, I come back. We are not saying exam results are not good. They are great. But again, we look at, you know, some, like I studied, I studied in the UK for my master's, right? When you, when you, are in, when I was in Legon, and I'm not denigrating Legon for any reason, we're very examination focused and we're very determined to learn and pass. When you go to Western societies, classroom work is very important. Participation is very critical, and the focus on application of your knowledge. So you notice that even the way the exam is done is a bit different. It's very liberal, and you are from that liberal arts, that liberal mindset. So. Yes, you are a politician, so you're saying, yes, let's make sure they get the numbers right. But you know that education in holistic quality, a, a child can do well with a grade, no, no, but no, there I, are other things you also need to put course, in. Of course. Right? But, but you have to accept the fact that the children have done well and they ought to be congratulated. A case can be made about the future of education. And that's where STEM comes in. STEM education is not about memorization. It's about what you do with your hands. You cannot just memorize and get a a drone flying. Mm -hmm. So we have so, eight minutes. Yeah, so so you have students who yeah. we are not changing the way we teach and learn in the classrooms, but we have to concede that something good has happened in this country. And I'm when I hear former President Mahama talking about the fact that the WASI is no longer are there, go to West African Examination Council. I want reporters to go to WIAC and find out that WASI is still WASI. It has not changed. I it's, thought I thought it was also COVID. Um, no, but it didn't change the fact that we are doing WASI. We are still part of WASI. Last but our, our calendar is different from the other countries. Yes. But it's still the same the WASI. The same, but the examiners, everything by West African examiners, they are set by them. But, but I thought that for, for standard exams, the, the, the sort of synchronizing the time is also critical, No, right? no, synchronizing. You see, Ghana had a choice. The choice was that uh, you just cut everything short and get the student to test in five months so that somehow you have gone back to normal, see? Yeah. Or you give yourself the time for students to study and challenge. prepare well and do well in the exam. Last, last year, two top West African students, two top, the topmost, two of them were from St. James. If we were doing different exams, mm. how did two students from St. James become the topmost students on the WASI? So it's, it's just a difference in time, but it's the same WASI. The same WASI. There was a point about cheating, mm -hmm. and uh, I think former president mentioned it, but then also Kofi Asari has said, that a teacher who helps students to cheat is now an assistant headmaster. And he actually pointed out the school. I don't know if this has come to your attention. You see, the, the thing is this. I mean, I don't play the game of equalization because I believe that cheating has not just begun. But I don't believe. We believe that it has to be eliminated. If you follow the BECA carefully, you know that the last three years something profound has happened. If you talk to even those who follow exams more practice, they will tell you, that there has been no leakages on the BEC. Why is that so? Because we sat down with WIAC and we said to them, you have to do randomization of questions. You have to do serialization. The questions should not be the same across the country, but they should be the same level of difficulty. And even when they are the same, random mindset. So my question one is somebody's question 20. The moment that happened, the first year, they randomized the questions and different regions had different set of questions. Then they moved on the last two years to a situation where they randomized and different examination centers have yeah. the questions arranged in such a way that if you say that the question has been leaked to you, yeah. you don't know which examination center's question has been leaked to you. Right. So there's a way to stop this. And we have worked with WIAC and BECE mm -hmm. has stopped it. Now we are moving on to a, another phase of BECE where within the examination room, mm. different students may have different questions. And when that happens, mm -hmm. examination more practices within the classroom will be a thing of the past. Now we're going to Awasi. Uh, I've met with ministers of West African countries. We've all agreed that randomization should be happening. So at least we are taking steps. And then there was this post by some guy who said there has been more cancellation of exams um, in 20. They compared 2014 and 2023, and the funny thing is that in 2014, 0.82% of one or more exams were cancelled, 0.82. And in 2023, it's so 0.83. So it's not a, a situation where okay. there has been more exams cancelled. Let's 20 talk about free SHS. And why are you so opposed to calls for reviewing of free SHS? Why am I? Yes, because I've read you say, for example, when President Mahama says that he will review free SHS in 100 days, 
you say for Mahama Free SHS review means cancel. You but see, we know what see, the word review means. I have mean. I have great respect for the former president. He yeah. has been a for I've never been a president, so I cannot even yeah. compare myself to him. My major question that I have and concern that I have is that President Mahama is willing. Maybe he doesn't have people who brief him, but most of the things he says about education are unfounded. And I, and I have a serious concern that mm. for, as a human being, you can say whatever you want to say. But if you are the former president who has been a, a, a vice president, has become uh, a president, and now you want to come back, get at the... But, but when he talks about review of free SHS, he's not the only person who said that. There's been many people No, it's not about the review. No, that's what I'm... My question it's, is on it's review. Not a, so, For so, me, that what so, I'm asking so, is review. So when, when a former president... Yeah can say that we are no longer part of WASI without being asked what's happening. Fair enough. You've, so, you've so clarified that. So it tells me that he doesn't know what he's talking about and if he talks review, he doesn't no, know No, but there are so many people who said it's a review. I can give you many names. The Catholic Bishop has asked for review. President Church has asked for review. Methodist Church has asked for review. Nagas has asked for review. IEA. Professor Ivan. Uh, no, no, so, no, Stephen Adair. Let me tell you this. Let me tell you this. Yeah. Review. Yes. It's a word. Yeah. Yeah. That has different meanings to different people. So I can't sit here and say, if you say review, I want position papers that says, this is what I want reviewed. Okay, let me, give you, let, me give, let, me, let me give you one. Mm -hmm. The IMF. Yeah. They said, Ghana spends close to 4% of GDP on education with good results in terms of enrollment, but poor learning outcomes. This is not me. But, but, let, let me just finish. Just two paragraphs. Ghana spends close to 4% of GDP on education with good results in terms of enrollment, but poor learning outcomes. Not my words. The flagship program, Free SHS, which covers the full cost of second education, has helped increase enrollment, but is poorly targeted. Emphasis mine. Key identified areas of potential improvement on education spending include strengthening primary education resources, better teacher training, and stronger performance-based funding practices. So, IMF, who gave us $3 billion, are saying that the Free SHS is poorly targeted. So, for review, targeting, let, let, reviewing let, let, it in let, terms let, of targeting. Let, let me tell you one thing. We've always heard from the Britain Woods institutions. These are the institutions who told us in the early and the late 1980s that university education is a private good and should be de-emphasized. The countries that followed that advice did not grow the way they should. Brazil did not. Now Brazil is a different country. So me, when it comes to this, you have to look at your circumstances, study carefully whatever report comes out, and see how best you change. But, the but is that fair to them? They are the same. They are the same people who. Let, let they, are, they are the same people who give you money for leap. No, let it's the same. I, I, let, let, let the, the World Bank see, is a better when, institution. When, when you, you just about, you just mentioned. Let, 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 no, you, you just let mentioned let here you, programs that you, the, you the World to, Bank pays for to make a case. So if I now read an IMF report to you and you now tell me that Britain institution, that's not fair. No, no, no. It's not about you. Are not the defender of Britain. No, it's just just I'm making a point. I'm making a point to you. I'm making a point to you that whenever you get any advice, you look at your situation and circumstances. You take the advice and use it. So do you admit that it's poorly targeted? They say, when they say poor learning, like, and we know what that means for Ghana, I'm now discussing this with them. We've had a series of meetings about Ghana's poor learning outcomes. They are using the test course of 2013 to determine the learning So you disagree with them? Yes. So you see, on the so polling now, outcome aspect. Now we have taken it up. We are working with the World Bank. Yeah. We are talking to them about the measuring of learning outcomes in Ghana. In 2015, only two percent of primary two students could read for understanding in Ghana. Now it's 38 percent based on exams, national standards test of 2022. I don't agree that Ghana is what it used to Fair be enough. in 2015. Do you agree so that the test is poorly targeted? No, I don't. So, so if you are using... Is there any area of free SHS that needs improvement? Let me tell you. Anything that you do, there will be areas that need improvement. Based on your own reflection and experience as minister, no, is no. there any area of free SHS that requires review or improvement? Improvement, we continue to train teachers, make sure teachers are well prepared to teach for better learning outcomes. They are doing that and we continue to do that. Are you prepared to consider things like people paying for boarding fees? Whilst day is free. The, nope. So for you, the, the only improvement is to improve teacher. Uh, well, you see, so far the country is getting better outcomes. We move on. There's been voices from everywhere calling for review. Let Are you saying you. that you've not, I'm, you've I'm not the, had... I'm the so minister of, for of the all case. the calls for review, Let you me. haven't had any voice that I'm has, the, app, has the, convinced you that there should be review I'm, of any I'm, aspect of free SHS. I'm the minister for education. I didn't appoint myself. I want you to know that. Yeah. 
I act on the directives of the president. But you also I advise mean. him because you are the one who is in no, charge of I the sector. You, you have a holistic my, view of my, the sector. My advice to the president should be said with you on this program. Well, I, you, so, I, you, so you, you tell me, you, you tell me what that. you can say. I, don't, I can't say that. If I advise the president, you come and say it here. Yeah. But you're saying that you don't think free research should be reviewed in any shape or form. Nope. We have to improve the learning outcomes, make sure the investment is worth the while of Ghanaians, that they are tasked payers cities are being used to their benefit and that we are bridging the gap between the rich and the poor and we are lifting out the poor to get the same opportunity that we are getting now sitting here in this studio we'll end it here and wish you well we'll talk again i believe not too long from now dr i'll say you are asking because... him about politics you forgot that <laughs> let one. him forget that <laughs> <laughs> well is this is the first interview for the year we wish you well i'm sure we'll talk about that at some point <laughs> but um yeah thank you doc for being on the program uh we've been talking to dr say reducho minister for education on education we've been focused on your questions we'll do a different interview on 2024 it says 2024 is not um eight years is not a law <laughs> so yeah we'll talk about dr Baumia. i'll talk about running mate issues but are you going to be running mate oh doc are you listening to the question oh, no, no, i don't select myself to become are you available for selection Am I available? Are you available for I selection? I like the way you post your questions. Are you available for selection? <laughs> I want you to add the appointing authority. <laughs> if, if, you're, if, if, if you were asked to do it, would you do it? I'll tell you this. Uh -huh. I'm here to serve my agency. In any capacity I find myself, I will serve this. Can you do it? I will do it. Can you add value to his ticket? If I'm given the opportunity, I will. But I don't know. He appoint, he selects, so I can't come here. Do you and, see yourself you, as the front runner? I know you are asking me a question to get me to say so. I'm not going to say it. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness! All right, the man you. who teaches uh, logarithms and exponential <laughs> equations is back in studio. Thank you, Doc, for talking to us. Uh, effective living series this morning delayed by 15 minutes because we had obviously Minister of Education.